if you like me you've been around for a long time you'll have a lot of um files old files and uh the one type of file that some users have a lot of are the .mex files it's a proprietary format um which was the paper port format uh, before paper port was bought out by visioneer the .mex is uh, a scanned format and so if like me you were scanning a lot of stuff around the sort of late 90s um, then you may have quite a few documents that you can't access now there was a way of doing that visioneer at one point did circulate a small utility it was really intended for people that you sent max documents to so that they could read them this is before the days of pdf um, as you can see here i've got a 1047 files which i'm trying to convert and i'm on i've done about 24 so far in fact that's a very that's a small fraction of the total n number i've got i've actually got 10,000 of them um, now what you used to be able to do is if there was one that you particularly wanted really badly like a copy of the deeds to your house or something or some sale or purchase documentation that you needed to refer to for dates then you could use the converter so you could still get access to the data although it was really pretty much locked up the holy grail was a program that converted you know up upgraded in effect max to pdf files on mass um, a batch converter but um, a small utility wasn't a batch converter and no and nobody I suppose because it's a proprietary file format and the company Visioneer is still in existence nobody's really interested in trying to make the sort of word processors we're using these days like Word or LibreOffice or OpenOffice read.max files or it's a it's a graphic format really so I suppose you know but nothing reads them and it's an, it's a nightmare so what happened was I needed to refer to one of these um, documents and the old Max to PDF converter now won't work it's almost impossible to find and under Windows 7 onwards it's really not ever worked so there I am stuck with 10,000 .max files don't know what to do with it so um, apparently there's there was this Max to PDF conversion wizard which came with the latest version of the paper port software which is 14 um, which I used to use it when it was paper port version 2, 3 and 4 so that's how long ago these files date back to but um, uh, I decided to um, see if I could just up upgrade these max files and make some sense of them but um, so what I've done is I've downloaded the paper port trial version which gives you 15 days to use it and I'm very pleased to say it does come with this max to PDF conversion wizard and that's pretty much all I've used but the problem is that um, it's pretty unreliable I wouldn't say it's buggy it's just not very stable and the reason why it's not very stable is because the max files are themselves um, very prone to corruption and I, if I remember correctly this was one of the problems they used to have and uh, you quite frequently used to open up a max file and find that uh, it said it was corrupt and then they brought in some sort of um, the, the reader then used to try and error correct and reclaim some of the data it wasn't always possible and as I say these were the days before PDF now PDF of course is the industry standard and much more reliable now this is doing pretty well actually it's done 75 out of these which is getting on for you know uh, seven eight nine percent um, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it running because I'm going to show you what you need to do to convert a lot of these so if you've got like I have 10,000 of them 10,000 of them using the method I've uh, I'm employing has taken me and will take me about two days to, to convert them all in fact it's not the sort of job computer job that I would normally want or like to do except that um, this is archives obviously going back to the late 90s anything from sort of 95 to about 2000 and so there's there's a tremendous amount of I wouldn't say it's historically important but it's important to me it's my personal documents going back and sort of you know there, there are agendas in there there are minutes of meetings I went to in there there are notes that I took at meetings and scanned um, because I scanned quite a bit of stuff 
and I still do I'm still a big believer in scanning I think um, basically you should scan every piece of paper that comes across your desk and uh, only store the stuff you can't scan which tends to be like catalogues and uh, and stuff like that and then I found that if you scanned everything you would end up with about one filing cabinet drawers worth of stuff a year that couldn't be scanned and um, and had to be filed so I reckon one filing cabinet drawer a year is pretty good price to pay for being able to have access to every single bit of paper that comes across your desk I'm sort of sitting here thinking well this is going well um, what I might do it, uh, it's fallen over about 200 times already this program because it's got no error checking in it it can't cope with bad .max files and if it comes across one it will crash and I'll show you how you need to what you need to do to cope with that because it is it's pretty um something I've picked up it's taken me like 8 to 10 hours sitting here to understand what's how this program works or doesn't work and what to do about it um when that happens so what I'm doing is I'm recording the screen not only to show you um, what I'm doing but uh, mainly because um, you need to record the screen to catch this when it falls over and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the um, the file name of the last file that it was processing the one that it um, crashed on and what you need to do is go into your network structure and rename that file from .max to .max.bad or whatever something that doesn't end in .max so that the next time it goes into the directory structure recursively it doesn't include that file and therefore will start on the next .max file which hopefully will be a good one well it might not be a good one it may be that the next one's a bad one as well in which case you'll have to receive, repeat the whole process all over again but um, it's going pretty well at the moment so I'm pretty happy with it but let's wait until it falls over and then I'll uh, I'll show you what you need to do Right, the processing windows uh, vanished there. So, um, what I need to do is um, I'm going to have to just uh, stop and quickly restart the recording so that I can use the recording that I'm making now. So, I'll be uh, straight back. Okay, so now there's the screen recording I've just made, and uh, what I'm going to do is um, put it into uh, Movie Studio you can play it in uh, VLC or something but just for the purposes of what I need to do with it um, Movie Studio is uh, the best thing to do what I'm looking for is the point at which it crashed so in fact um, I'm going to put it on uh, full screen on the other TV and just go through the frames to the right so it looks like it was working on a file called uh, gdsdata.max so um, the next thing you have to do is go to that directory so um, treatment provision systems GDS data GDS data max uh, now that's odd because in the GDS data folder I've got a file called GDS data dot max but it's already labeled GDS data dot max dot bad so I don't even know which file that was working on in fact there is a GDS data 
there is a GDS data um, PDF so I'm not at all sure that didn't actually convert that or it may have just saved as much of it as it could and then relabeled the max file max.bad and then crashed I don't know I don't know point is this thing's got no error checking on it and I've got no more if, I, if we go back to um, the whole screen you'll see that's the last frame before it crashed so that's the, the, the most so now if it's relabeled that file which I'll show you here that's what I'm looking at so that's the file except that it doesn't exist anymore that it's supposed to be working on and this is may or may not be the file it's just created from it I suppose we could have a look at the uh, creation date modified and size so that dated um, yesterday but that's dated today So that may have been from yesterday, and that may be the PDF it's created today. What it does is it moves all the PDF files into a um, into a directory. Sorry, this is a part of the problem with this. You just have to try and make it, you know, understand how things are working. Um, I need to look in my documents folder and in there we'll find uh, converted max files and if we list those and go to G there's GDS data and that's today and that's so it looks as though it has actually completed the conversion on that today and, cre and created the new one and then completely crashed I don't know whether it looks like the GDS data conversion worked and the other one didn't so what can you do? what are you going to do? all you can do is just start it again and you'll get used to starting this again the Max files to be converted. It assembles are actually is actually the list of max files which it's converted. So that's actually not the max files you want to convert. So you have to remove all of those and then add a folder, which is the folder you are working on. And you see we've gone down from a thousand to about one hundred and seventeen. So that's pretty good now. We're 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 pretty well getting there now and then when you go on to next MRC which is not ticked is a sort of a reduced size of uh, Adobe the only other thing I would want to do here would be to change the language to the UK and then you do get an option to leave the max files where they were now that is my preference would be to keep them where they were but in fact because I've had I've got very confused about which ones have been successfully converted and which ones haven't. The only way you can work out whether they've been successfully converted is by removing the max files. Now I hate doing that because what you're doing is you're deleting the original source material. So if it has made a mistake and none of these PDF files are readable then I've lost all the data. A years worth of data. So just do make sure that you have a backup before you start a backup of every max file basically in and if you can do it in in the directory preserve the directory structure while you're doing it then fine you'll have to make your own mind up about this is big data here so you know you know for, for the end user so i'm going to move them to a common folder so that if the if the max file's gone i know and there's a pdf file there then i'm and i'm reasonably happy so next and then convert and see what happens and again it's working now 
and let it stop now this is exactly what you get so let's just stop and restart that this is the recording in progress that I'm going to want so I'm going to have to stop it and start it again so that's the one I want open it in movie studio this is obviously a much shorter file go back to where it crashed go forward right that's the last frame so it looks like uh, this uh, pds by bda dot max is the file that's caused the trouble so it's uh, gds let's go to the directory GFO treatment provision systems now I wouldn't be doing this if this wasn't such a valuable archive and also on balance you are saving time another little tip if you look at the directory you'll see that the max files do tend to show up so you can see it's converted all these ones and you can see it hasn't converted this one and here's the PDS by BDA max which was working on when it crashed so what you have to do is label that as a bad one and it will become unusable yes that's what we want it to become unusable and just shut down the video software and start again after a while you'll want to delete these because it starts to take time to catalogue all these so add a folder this you can't even paste a folder into here because they've got their own bespoke folder selection thing so it's done one so next then you get fed up with changing all these so you just click next and then convert now there's a you saw that one being converted didn't you in real time and now it's in review and audit so you can see them being converted in real time there. Now you can follow this if you want to in the directory but you can't follow it reliably enough to know which one is the one that's caused it to crash and it doesn't spew up any information when it collapses so doing a screen recording is the only thing I can suggest that you can do Now having said that, it does do, I mean, you know, this thing does recurse into the subdirectories correctly, so even if you've got 10 levels of subdirectories, it will find them all. Found over 10,000 in my case. It does convert them when it's, they're not corrupt. It seems to do a pretty good job of converting them. It preserves the annotations. It does something extremely weird with the icons on the desktop. And you see they've all got some sort of overlay there some of them have and that changes seemingly randomly while it's working so I don't know what it's doing there it converts multi-page documents really well which is good because many of these max files are collections of documents you know so like you might have like a year's worth of bank statements or all the bank statements relating to an account that's closed so some of the files are quite complex and quite large it preserves the annotations although you uh, can't really select the language uh, because it crashes so often you get so you get fed up with it just leave it in American English um, obviously if there was more error checking on this program it would be brilliant I mean it would be brilliant it's the program that absolutely fits the bill for many people who 
used paper port in the early days but it would be so marvelous if this was like a two minute job where you could just like how does it work yes it's recursed them press a button come back a day later it's done them all but because it's got no error checking it's a two day job that takes two days you have to sit here and literally watch every one of these be converted now that's still faster than doing it by hand but it's still a, it's a major um, uh, commitment and also you know it's not I, I'm using I've downloaded Visioneer's paperport software I at the moment I don't have any intention of buying it it started to remind me of all the reasons why I stopped using it in the first place they were one of those firms that insisted that you buy a new version every year and pay the full price a bit like um, QuickBooks and um, Intuit where you know they, they never have enough money it doesn't matter how many times this program has been paid for they never have enough money they always want more money every year off you which is why I hate QuickBooks so much and also why I hate um, and now Microsoft Office has gone down that line and Adobe Suite has gone down that line and um, Paperport and Visioneer in particular it was a disaster when Paperport was bought by Visioneer because it they just treated it as a cash cow uh, so they want forty pounds, and it's still a very good scanning program. And I do miss it because it had a ton of stuff for despeckling documents and just rubbing out bits around the edges that made them nice and clean, um, which Adobe never brought into Acrobat. I just never understood why Adobe didn't incorporate a ton of the, you know, like the blocky erasers brushes that uh, that uh, Paperport has and probably still has to just clean up PDFs um, and it's doing text recognition on these documents so you know it's in a way it's sort of it is the program that I've wanted for years and, and everybody wants there we are so it's finished the results are those So what I'm going to do is I'll just show you the extent of the problem. Let's just uh, go back to my documents. Here we are, um, converted Max files. Control A, delete. 1060 files converted. that's got rid of them so now it's, it's found a thousand and sixty let's just go back and no it's still found them so let's just remove them all from the directory add a folder going to I going to data going to this one select see how many we've got to do from here I mean I don't I'm not although I'm sort of I've downloaded this software and I'm using it and I'm not going to pay for it I don't have any qualms about that because basically this was a proprietary format at a time when I suppose it was okay to have a proprietary this is prior to PDF um, but then what happened was they they were quite brazen about the fact that if you stop using their product, you lost all your data. It's just, there's, you know, there was absolutely no intention to have any sort of data portability. And these days, I wouldn't even buy a program that didn't allow me to get my data off it at the end of the day. So I think I'm just forcing them to make good on a promise, which they should have, they should have, you know, they should have delivered the goods in the first place. They should have said yes will give you a f there should be a free utility this max to pdf conversion with it should be free on the internet and it should work and it should have more error checking in it now i'm not saying that it should necessarily fix the files i mean you think it should fix the files I honestly do think it should fix the files uh, i think it should try and recover as much data from a corrupted file as it can but all i'm asking is that it should just jump over a file it can't fix it should just look at a file and say 
this file could just be a blob it could just be a load of binary crap and I need to be able to deal with that I, I mustn't crash out just because it doesn't have the bytes aren't in the right order to start off with um, and that's exactly what it does there's no er error checking at all so it should check the folder structurally and um, and reject it if it can't be processed and move on to the next one and let you know give you a list report which ones it, it couldn't convert so you then perhaps you might then decide whether you want to run a utility on it to try and recover some data to, you know from those files so we've got 3864 to go what you might like to do is is break it down as I say just do it in more manageable bits so this has got a thousand in this has got a thousand in perhaps just do a thousand or you might you know might just want to crack on with it click next and then off we go now I don't know how many of these out of this 3864 are going to be corrupt um, when you consider that you know obviously you're going back to the late 90s these getting on for 20 years old now these files and I mean how many computers do you have in in 15 or 20 years you probably have seven six or seven so they've been transferred a lot of these probably started off on floppy disk by which I mean the old uh, three and a quarter floppies and so they've been transferred from computer to computer hard drive to hard drive uh, six or seven times now so I suppose you could expect quite you know a percentage of them to be corrupt um, that's the other thing it keeps doing is it keeps creating this um, t temp o dot opd file on the desktop I don't understand what that's all about um, this when this crashes it uh, usually just quits to the desktop CTD um, sometimes it comes it throws up an error and says that it's written to some memory that it shouldn't have done um, and sometimes it it says it has a hard fault or something it's all very unfriendly and so 20 years ago if it writes memory that it shouldn't have written to or complains about a hard fault then I recommend that you uh, reboot the computer which I know is a real pain but if like you're getting if you if you restart it three times and straight away you get three hard faults you may as well just reboot the computer it's quicker anyway I'm going to put something on the other screen and um, spend a pleasant day when I could be outside in the country um, just sitting here and watching this thing count up from 20 to 3864 bearing in mind that many of these files are multi-page and it's doing OCR on them as well so every one of them is going to take a good 10 seconds or so if you want to do the math anyway I hope this has been helpful and uh, if you have any more comments or questions then just uh, leave them in the in the comment section and I'll um, try and reply if I can thanks very much there we are look what the hell's that? It's a computer with a computer screen with a sort of a semicircle on the front. Don't know what it looks like, a gas mask or a umbilical cord or a padlock or a perhaps it's locked the files. Honestly I don't know what what it's doing. The weird. Anyway, at the end of the day I'll have my archives will be back.